folks, it's Cliff here again from Down Under, where the sun never seems to shine this time of year. Uh, if you've been following me, I've been making a series of parts for the Impact Tolerant Touch Probe. I'm onto the bodies now, and this is a rapid turn, probably about part 27 rapid turn. I better stop numbering them because it's getting a bit uh, onerous thinking, oh, I've got to watch 27 videos on rapid turn. Um, it'll put you off, won't it? Maybe I should call it something else. Maybe I should call it Impact Tolerant Touch Pro Component Manufacturer or, or Cliff's Shop or something. So I'll get on. This is uh, Set Up and Run Rapid Turn. Really uh, just a quick overview of setting up a job, uh, getting it going and the results. Cheers. I'm just setting up now to do another job on rapid turn and I'm going to machine the bodies, the top half of the bodies and there's, um, there's four machining operations there. There's the internal bore and chamfer and groove for the wiring and, the ex and facing and the external radius. So that's five machining operations, is it? And I notice, I don't think there's a lot of people that are using gang tooling and automatic tool changing with rapid turn yet and I would encourage you to get into it because it's it's really great you could do a lot of production work automatically I imagine quite a few of you are hesitating are, are, are not going ahead with it because it seems difficult well I know if I was looking at a video of it I'd think oh that looks difficult um, it looks difficult, but it actually isn't that difficult. Once you've got a basic structure to mount your tools on, and that's just simple, um, you know, simple blocks of steel, um, you took the actual tool positions are not critical because you can adjust that with the X, Y, and Z adjustments. Um, so you mount your tools. Now, one thing that would have put me off early on looking at videos of it is. How do you get? How do you know there's going to be clearance? You know, you've got chucks, jaws spinning round, and reamers and boring bars, and you could have a horrible crash up. How, how do you know where to put the tools? How do you set them all up? Um, I'll just go through that briefly because it it might look complicated, but it's actually really simple. I mean, to start with, you decide what machining operations you need for the part. Then you get some basic tools, and you plug them in. You know, I've got a grooving tool, a straightforward turning tool, a reamer for the bore, a boring tool, and you plug them roughly in place where you think it might work. So you've got your tools roughly in place. Now the next thing is just to index to the approximate positions. So let's say this is the boring operation. I'll just index roughly there and check, okay, it's not going to snag on the reamer, that's good. All right, that one's all right. Let's have a look at the reamer. Well, that's clear. There's nothing going to snag there. We're going to be going in about an inch deep. That's fine. All right, we're going to do some OD turning. Now, what's at risk here? Let's have a look. I'm looking at the back, that's all clear. 
Looking at the front, that looks good. All right, that tool's a little bit close to that jaw. It's half an inch away, but it's not a problem because it's not going to be any closer than that. All I'm going to be doing is a facing operation. So I'm just doing basic checks. So I'm going to be doing a facing operation down there. That's clear, nothing in the way. It's amazing actually how seldom, how often it is clear. And finally, I'm going to do a grooving operation here. So again, just looking around, looking at the back, the rim is not hitting the motor, there's nothing else in the way. No, that's all good. So we're going to be about there. We're going to come in. We're going to groove about there. No, there's plenty of room. Okay, so what you've done now is you've checked. Clearance is all good. So it's worth per proceeding now. All I have to do now is set the exact tool positions and tighten everything up. And um, I, I, I can show you quite a lot of external machining on the various parts of the touch probe, but I haven't got into the internals to the, uh, to the critical intellectual property of the inside of the end cap or the body or the stylus assembly because I probably should be a bit boring and keep that stuff confidential at this early stage. Hope you guys understand. The next thing you probably think if you're like me is, yeah, okay, you've got all the rough positions, but how do you set the software up with all the offsets? Well, I won't go into it in detail because my earlier videos on Rapid Turn, I go into that, and there's other videos, and Tormac do videos on offsets. Listen to the hail on the roof. Goodness me. This is horrible. Oh, hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm sort of shouting over the hail. Um, so you do a, um, a sketch. Well, I, I find it really helps to do a, a real rough, quick sketch that represents your tool layout. I don't have to shout, it stopped. And then just write tool numbers on them. Tool one, two, three, four. And it's a good idea to have a master tool which is able to be reset should you ever lose your settings when you're referencing, should you have a power cut or whatever. Pick on a tool that can always be redialed in. So um, I'm using this Rima bore for convenience for tool one because I can always find it again. So I've got that set as tool one. And I've set my DROs at zero. And if you look at the tool table, tool one is zero, zero. And Y, which is this little DRO here, is also zero. So now I've got the, the uh, machine main offset set on tool one. And all the other tools are just a relative distance from that position to where they are. So they will be all plus or minus those distances. Something rather strange going wrong with my heater here. I think it might be in its death throes. Well, this is turning into a sort of an overview explanation, just covering the basics. So we've chosen the back reamer bore as our main master offset. You could call it the G54 work offset or the DRO X, Y, Z, zero position. The distance is stored internally in the software from where the reference points are or the homing points are to that X, Y, zero. And then all the other tool positions are um, relative offsets. And they're set here with the tool touch facility of Pathpilot. And that's been gone over with many other videos, so I won't bother, bother you with that now. But this is just basic concepts. So on your drawing, you've got T1, 2, 3, 4, and just write down the Y positions as you index over. And that way, next time you set the job up, and it might be in several months' time, and it's all getting a bit vague in your memory, you can just pull the drawing out and um, find them quite quickly and you might need to fine-tune a couple of them if you've sharpened your tool or set it up slightly differently but it's there to save your time. 
If you come from a CNC milling background, you might not realize that most NC, most CNC turning jobs are actually a series of very simple tool paths. Something like this is a series of very simple tool paths and it lends itself very well to the conversational. Again, this is just an overview, but you know, you've got all of these operations, OD, ID, turn, face chamfer, part groove, drill thread, and you can very quickly produce some code. And you can do it in stages. So I've just done this stage now, which is facing and putting the little radius on the outside. And I'll just run that now, and you can see what I mean about how simple it is. This is just a few minutes work. <laughs> So in a few minutes you've programmed the first tool to do the face and the rad. Then you do the next tool and the, the next little simple set of machining code and then just link it together with some Y moves and you're away. It really is a very quick and simple process and, I, and I, if, if you have a similar background to me it may not have registered just how easy it is to do production turning on a machine like this. And that, of course, is the whole point. It's ideal for production turning. It's obviously not worth going to all this trouble to make one or two parts. You might as well do it on a manual lathe. But if you've got 50 parts, or even 20 parts, then it is just streets ahead of doing it via the old methods. All right, let's give it a whirl. Well that's come out really well. Pleased with that. Okay, so um, that's it with the uh, arbor that I've been making mounted on it. You can see that's there's quite a bit of clearance there. That's the concentricity adjustment. Um, but I need it to be a close fit because I have a mandrel that I use um, for, for mounting it, for hol holding it when I'm machining, uh, I put a cap screw on the inside and um, mount it on this mandrel for when I'm doing the fourth axis machining. What do you think of the gold ITTP? I was thinking that would give it a bit of contrast, but it's a little bit wishy-washy. I might have to go to a darker gold like copper or something. And then, you know, and then you've got blue, the anodized blue, and then the copper ITTP. Just uh, let me know if you like the idea, or should it all be blue? And this operation on rapid turn, the cycle time is, um, machining cycle time is 1 minute 5 seconds. So it doesn't take too long before the numbers start building up. 600 metres for lower north, uh, even lower, 400 metres uh, to a parts of the south bank. So the strongest severe. Today we're going to pull the foot of actually turning up, and I wouldn't have blamed them. Hey, Thanks for watching guys, see you later.